get started and, and we'll likely have a few participants join us a, a, as we go along. Appreciate everyone's patience. Apparently a dash or an underscore, something happened with a URL. Um, so uh, hopefully you can hear me now um, and we'll go ahead and get started. So my name is Dave Stone. I'm an associate professor at, the, at Oregon State University and I direct uh, NPIC. Uh, and just so that everyone knows, um, NPIC is a cooperative agreement between the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency and Oregon State University with the mission of bringing science-based and objective information on pesticides to diverse audiences. Today you'll be listening to a webinar entitled, Take a Tour, Become a Pro, NPIC's new pesticide search tool, NPRO, which stands for the NPIC Product Research Online. And today you'll be hearing from Amy Hallman, who's a senior pesticide specialist as well as Sean Ross, who's the IT lead for the NPIC project. Before I turn it over to Amy, I have a few logistics to cover. Uh, to facilitate the flow of the webinar and to get us uh, back on track, we'd appreciate that if anyone who is calling in on the toll-free number to please mute their line by hitting star six. You can also listen to this uh, through your computer speakers, which we have placed a global mute on. If you have any questions, please use the chat function. At the end of the presentation, we'll go back and review the questions as well as ask people to unmute their phones if they want to ask questions at that time. We'll be recording this webinar, so if you have any colleagues who wish to view the presentation, particularly if they weren't able to get in, uh, we'll send follow-up information on how to access the recording. And finally, I'd like to note that this is a, a really a, a, a beta version of the current NPIC tool, and while it's fully functional, it represents really our initial stab at getting this right. We've already identified some additional features that we wish to implement, and we invite you to use this tool and welcome any comments you might have to help us improve it. So with that, I'll turn it over to Amy. And again, we'd like to express your thanks with being patient and for joining us today. Thanks, Dave. Um, yeah, we're actually really excited to see how much interest there has been for NPRO. Um, so let's go over a little bit about what we'll talk about today. Okay, so... Um, we're going to talk a little bit about who is NPIC, some other web apps by NPIC, why NPIC decided to build the NPRO tool, and then also who it's for. It's important to talk about where the product data come from and how that affects some of the limitations of the NPRO results. We're also going to go over some example uses for NPRO, but then we're going to walk through some of those examples step by step and, and show you the actual program. Uh, last but not least, we do want to talk about when NPRO will be available. So who is NPIC? Um, we are an objective science-based information service for pesticides and pesticide products. We run a toll-free phone service, which is available four hours a day, 8 to noon Pacific time or 11 to 3 Eastern time. And we are funded through a cooperative agreement with EPA. We answer about 12,000 inquiries per year from very diverse audiences. Uh, most of those are from the public. We have about over 90% of our inquiries come from the public. We provide science-based and bilingual information. Uh, we translate technical jargon so that it's more access accessible and easier to understand. Uh, we also connect people with local resources when needed. Our NPIC website has over 700 pages in English and Spanish, and we receive over 5 million page views per year. We leverage the interactions we have with the public to create appropriate publications, podcasts, and videos so that our materials can better reflect the interests of our audience. Um, and I want to go ahead and pass it over to Sean now. He'll talk a little bit more about NPRO and some of our other NPIC web apps. Uh, thank you, Amy. Um, just going to give you a brief history of some of the other applications we've developed uh, before we get to the meat of the new stuff. Um, these are screenshots of our other uh, web apps. These are all uh, targeted at mobile devices. Um, NPRO it will be our first uh, fully-fledged desktop browser uh, app. Uh, Maple, Pest, Pals, and the Repellent Finder are the, the four that are, are up right there right now. Um, and they're available on our website if you'd like to take a look. Um, the um, history, I'm going to give you a brief history of this. Um, when NPIC was young at OSU, we used a commercial product to get our product information uh, that the specialists use on the phones from uh, Windspears. Uh, was delivered on CD quarterly. 
Um, and then that was terminated by the company in uh, early 2000s, and we needed an alternative. So uh, at that point, I took the PPIS raw data from EPA, um, what the EPA's public website, and created a program called PEARS. And that was a desktop application that was used by our specialists to uh, retrieve product information, um, but that was not open to the public. Um, we did get a lot of feedback from people using that, uh, that had seen the tool or that were former NPIC people, uh, that they really liked that tool and, and desired a similar level of access uh, for the public. So um, we now have a mobile product version, um, that's Maple. It gives you a subset of the features in uh, pairs in NPRO. Um, and now we are releasing NPRO, which is a fully fledged um, uh, desktop operating or desktop browser version um, that actually has, a, has more features than, than the original pairs did. Um, so Maple was designed for professionals using mobile devices. It's available to the public. It is still, it's still there. It is optimized for mobile. So it's, it's a, the best choice if you have a, a phone or tablet. Um, and you can search by these, these six uh, parameters. Um, the NPRO, on the other hand, um, is more fully featured. It allows you to search by any or all of a combination of these nine items, registration number, name, et cetera, um, pest, product types, those things. You can then view data from the, um, uh, the PPIS information. It, it contains information about uh, details of the product, and then that links as well directly to the EPA's federal PDF label for that product. Um, and then any the product ingredients that were, are displayed also provide links directly to the chemical page on EPA's chem search. So you get a, a summary view of the product as well as a link to chem search. Um, it's designed for professionals. You really need to know a bit about how um, the product registration works um, and how use sites are specified and, and what some chemical synony synonyms might be um, and what pest names are and how there can be a variety of different pest names and subspecies and, and lots of different things there. So you do need to know a bit about that. Um, why should we, why do we have NPRO instead of just sticking with Mapro, Maple? Well, Maple was designed for uh, the weaker browsers on mobile devices. So NPRO is, uh, takes advantage of all the modern desktop browsers. Um, it uh, uses all the features. It's a, it's a responsive HTML application um, that allows uh, for enhanced product searches. You can refine your searches. You can search by the formulation, product type, and signal word, which you couldn't do in Maple. Um, you can combine all fields um, to search in different ways. Uh, it has a, a much better product display, and it's significantly faster. Um, the product data that are in here are, are entirely the EPA. Um, this is the data that comes from the pesticide product information system, which is uh, the files are available on EPA's uh, website, and those that's where the raw product data come from. Um, that we just pull that information in and. Uh, arrange it and into a usable format uh, to make it easy to get to. Um, and then we also link directly to the product labels. We don't hold those labels here. The links actually go directly to the EPA's label site. Um, the labels are the federal labels. So as we show here, the uh, registration number 4-122 um, is that bonide fruit tree spray, but it also has distributor numbers um, the, the various other numbers you see there, those all point to that single federal uh, label, and that's, that's the way the system works. We do not have any state labels. We don't have access to those. This is all just federal, uh, the federal product labels. Um, so there are, we just want to be upfront, there are some limitations about this. Um, we only reflect the, the data that's, that is presented to us. Uh, it's federally registered products. We do not verify any information. We do not um, edit any of the data at all. We are just um, uh, making it available in a usable, uh, easy to use format. And uh, I'm going to give it back to Amy to show some examples and uh, I'll go from there. Okay, so um, we're going to look at some examples from fairly common pesticide products that we receive inquiries about. Um, first, we want to ask can we find the active ingredients in the label? for a product where we actually already have the EPA registration number. So we're going to go back to a fruit tree spray. Second, we want to try to find those products which have 240 as an active ingredient 
but that also have a signal word of caution or are considered low toxicity. Third, we'd like to move on to products that are registered for use against cockroaches, specifically for use in the home, and then try to further refine that list to show only those products that do contain boric acid. So this is the NPRO Home tab. This is what you'll see when you visit the NPRO URL. Down in the lower left-hand corner, you will see the URL there. And that's actually live right now. If you want to visit that, you can play along while we're going through this right now in a new browser. Or if you'd like to visit it in the future, we'd be happy to answer questions you might have about it. There are several other tabs. Um, they're shown quickly here, but we are going to go into more detail, so I'm not going to stay on this slide. And then for our first demonstration, let's look at that fruit tree spray. Um, it's fairly common to have questions about a product without having much product information, maybe just having the product name. Um, so what would happen if we searched for a product just using bonide fruit tree spray? Actually, the results come back with one product, and it's canceled. But we know there are fruit tree sprays by bonide out there on the market. Um, so what went wrong? And this is really a limitation of using just the product name. So let's try a more specific name. Let's try bonide, a complete fruit tree spray. And with that, we get 171 matching products. Um, so let's see, maybe let's click on some of those that are active. And you can actually do that by clicking this uh, filter here. You can click on active, and you only get those products which are currently registered and are not canceled. But however, there are still seven products there. Um, really, the best way to search would be using the EPA registration number if we have that. So by using EPA registration number 4-122, we see that the first result is um, the, the federal product, the one we're looking for. And then after that, we see um, products with other distributors. These products are listed in numerical order. Okay, so we're going to move on to a little bit more of a complicated example. Now we're looking for all of those products which contain 2,4-D, but that also have the caution signal word. It's important to note here that it's very easy to clear your previous search. On the lower right-hand side of the top box, you might see clear all tabs. And this button is going to erase any previous searches that you've already done. Um, so after we click the Clear All Tabs button, we can then go to the Reg Number and Name tab. And oh, I'm sorry, the AI Pest Site tab, um, because we have the active ingredient 2,4-D. So you can see as soon as you start typing in the word 2,4-D into the active ingredient field, it actually automatically responds with options. Um, and you can select from that field. It's also important to note that you can, instead of typing in an active ingredient, you can type in a CAS number or a PC number in this field. Um, on the very bottom, you'll see the blue box with 24D. That's actually what it looks like after you've selected the product, or sorry, the active ingredient. And if you decide that you've selected the wrong one, it's simple to just do a backspace or delete to get rid of those unwanted active ingredients. Okay, so now we're switch, switching tabs. We chose the active ingredient 24D. We're moving to the type form word tab, signal, signal word tab. Um, and for signal word, it's really just a drop down list. Um, so I chose caution from that drop down list, and we're going to click new search and see what results we get here. Okay, um, so what we see there are 1,100 matching products. Um, and some of those are canceled, so maybe we would want to further refine uh, by active ingredients. Okay, um, so now that we're just looking at those active ingredients, we have, sorry, active products, um, we now have 653 active products. Um, so let's go ahead and take a closer look at a product. Any of these are clickable, so we're going to choose the first one, which is Riverdale Triamine Granular Weed Killer. So this is the product page. Um, it has a lot of information about the product, including from the top down, registration number, name, its active status and when it was registered, who the registrant is, as well as the caution word formulation. 
we also have the ingredients, the pests, the use sites, and what type it is. Um, this is a great page because you can actually do a simple search. If you're looking for a pest or a use site, you can do control F or on a, a Mac, a command F, and you can actually find some of the things you're looking for very simply. Um, also, any of the active ingredients that are listed there, if you were to click on those underlying active ingredients, it takes you right to ChemSearch. Um, so you can look at active ingredient toxicity rather than product toxicity, and you can look at other regulation information that might be on ChemSearch. There's an additional feature, which I love here. Um, you can actually scroll over or hover on top of any of those active ingredients, and you get a synonym box. So if you're not familiar with the active ingredient that has been returned on this page, you can look and see if any of those synonyms look familiar. If they don't look familiar, then you could always click on it and go further to ChemSearch to try to learn more about that active ingredient. Okay, so one more um, feature here is we have the federal label PDF. There is a button on the top of the products page. So we're going to click that and it takes us right to the federal label and this is actually hosted through the EPA's website. So the URL at the top of the page is something that can be copy pasted if you need to send it, share it, email it. Um, it will take them right to this PDF. The same is true for the previous slide, that, that product page. Um, it has a unique URL that can be shared or emailed if you'd like to send that along. Okay, so for our third example, we're going to try to complicate things a little bit more here. Um, we're looking for those products that can be used to control cockroaches within a home. So I, I again went to the clear all tabs button on the lower right hand side to get rid of any previous searches that I've done. And starting at the active ingredient pest and site tab here, um, I'm going to start typing roach into the pests field and we get lots of results. It's actually very important to notice here that there aren't just these six or seven results. There is a scroll bar on the right hand side and there are many more options to choose from here. You can select as many of these options as you think are necessary to complete your search effectively. Um, so in this example, I'm going to choose the German cockroach and the American cockroach specifically. I'm going to look for products that are going to control one or both of those, those pests. And when I do that search, um, I get 1,600 matching products. Now these are active, canceled, all of those. Um, and that seems like an unwieldy number of products, but I'm going to go ahead and search by use sites to see if I can find products that can be used in the home. And when I selected homes indoor, um, it reduced my list down to 34 products. Um, just knowing a little bit about pesticide products, that seems like a really small number. I'm actually a little worried about that number. I'm wondering if I did something wrong. And this is kind of where experience in the pesticides world comes in handy. Um, and so to kind of augment this a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and add another use site. I'm going to add domestic dwellings. And look at that number. It jumped up from 34 to over 1,100 matching products. So we have a lot better, more um, widespread search here now. But we want to take it a little bit further. We want to look for those products that only have, or that at least include, active, uh, the active ingredient boric acid. So we're going to pop up to the top field, active ingredients, and we're going to include boric acid. And we can click down on refine previous search. So it's kind of like a search within a search here. Um, and now we only have 15 matching products, much more manageable number. Um, also, some of those products are canceled, so it's, it's, it's likely there are fewer than 15 products there. Um, you know, we understand that this can be kind of a learning curve and it can be difficult at first. If you have questions, if you think that you should be getting different results, if you think that, that what you're receiving isn't what you expect, please do contact us and we'd be happy to either help walk you through it or maybe give you some tips, some pointers to make it a little bit more of an effective search for, for your needs. Um, and with that, we would like to mention that this webinar today will be posted on our YouTube channel shortly, hopefully within one week, as well as on our website. 
Um, and in the short future, we will also be making um, a shorter version of a tutorial with step-by-step -step instructions on how to use NPRO. We currently have other tutorials, both on our YouTube site and on our, um, our website at NPIC, that help you use some of our other web apps. So we're going to add one more. I have the NPRO tutorial. In summary, um, you know, NPRO, it allows us to search for pesticide products using one or a combination of up to nine criteria. You can also view the federal pesticide labels as a PDF, and you can also link directly to ChemSearch by following those active ingredients on the product pages. NPRO, like I said before, is currently available. Please follow the link if you'd like to play around with it a little bit uh, or in the future. Please share it and link it with any other interested parties. Again, if you have questions about using NPRO, please do contact us. Our phone number is there. We'd be happy to help you. Um, also, if you had feed feedback about today's webinar, please do email us. The email is there below the phone number. Um, and with that, I believe we have plenty of time for questions. Great. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Sean. So at this point, um, please unmute your phones, or, or we didn't see anything come in through the chat function. But if you have any questions, uh, fire away. We'd be happy to uh, ask them or address them. I have a question. I know um, historically, uh, you know, the, your uh, NPIC is relying on EPA's information systems, apparently, in this case as well. But the pest information and the use sites, um, as well as distributor information, have not always been um, very complete or accurate and, and reliable. So I don't know if, if EPA has addressed that information with you or you know sort of where that stands in terms of whether processes have been improved in updating that information, but can you comment to that? Yes. Yeah. The ability of these to really capture um, completely and accurately the, um, some of those areas like pests and use site and uh, distributor products. Thank you for that question. This is Casey Buell, and I'll respond to that. It's my understanding that there is work ongoing right now at EPA in the Office of Pesticide Programs to streamline the number of pests and use sites, kind of combine things that can be considered synonymous, and that work is ongoing and anticipated within the next 12 months, I think. Um, so, but we don't have control over it or power over it. When you say the distributor uh, label information might be incomplete, um, it's my understanding that a distributor product that is registered with the EPA does make it into the PPIS, but sometimes even those distributor products, they only provide one name, but they might be sold under several names. So that's another weakness about the product name field. We can't emphasize enough uh, that the EPA registration number is key to finding the, the best and most accurate piece of information about a product. I hope that helps. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, we've got a question that uh, came in through the chat box. Uh, will there be a dictionary for pests and or use sites in case a person does not know how they may be listed? Um, we could do that. We could provide a list um, of those sites. Um, and, but that doesn't necessarily tell you what they mean. We have we can we can display a list and that's something that uh, that we can make uh, available. Uh, I can do that fairly simply, um, but that doesn't it isn't really a dictionary. It's just a list, and I'm not sure that we can address that. I think given the fact that we're, the streamlining is in process, it's probably not a good use of time to organize the ginormous list of of pests and sites um, into a dictionary at this time, but rather to wait for that improvement to take place. And in the meantime, if you're struggling to fight, figure out what kind of search term you should be using, please do give us a call. We've been working with this data set for over a decade and training new staff on it repeatedly. So we're, we're pretty good at it now. So um, do rely on us until the, the use sites and pest names have been streamlined. We've got a question being typed into the box, it looks like. I have a question when you're searching in the AI pest site uh, query box when you're entering multiple tests. Are the products listed going to be registered products for all of the pests listed or one or the other? 
Um, yeah, it, it's an okay. it, it's an or query, so it's any any of the pests in that list. Any one of them. Yeah, any one of them will or match. Combination. Yeah. It might be nice to indicate that somewhere on the page, just so it's clear. Okay. Yes, I can do that. I can do that. Um, we have a question from Mike um, in the chat box. When looking at the product legend, is active non-RUP products? Um, the RUP products are shown in purple um, on that list just to distinguish them. Their status is shown on the product page. So if it's a canceled RUP product, it would still show purple just to distinguish it. Um, so the, to, to find the active versus canceled, um, I believe it's, yeah, you, you need to look at that. Um, are there any, let's see, from IRP um, on the chat box, are there any wild card options? Um, not as such. Um, the, if you wanted to search for all of the uh, roach products, for example, you'd have to choose all of them um, in the all the roaches in the list of pests, but it does accept that. Um, that's something we may consider um, adding in the future. Um, is some sort of uh, you know a star or, or um, something like that in the search box. Um, right now, it looks those up um, from a list and then puts them in so that the matches are exact. Um, and so they, um, a... I'm sorry, well, very quickly. The um, and the string searches are contains searches. So if that string that's searched um, if in a product name or registrant name, for example, if it appears anywhere in that in a product name, um, it will match. So it, it it doesn't have to be exact. So that's a substring search in, in that case for those. Uh, but the products, the pests and um, pests and sites um, you, and active ingredients have to be chosen from their lists. So sort of a follow-up question or comment um, regarding the or search. It would be nice to have the capability to make that an and search. I don't know if that would be possible to build in. And likewise, with the list of sites, I think it'd be very helpful to have that list. And gosh, it would also be really helpful if you could have that string search feature. Because so often, the use sites, you know, there's redundancy, like we all know. It, it would be anything you can do to make it easier to make sure that the, the search really looks at all the relevant use sites would, would be very helpful. That can be a double-edged sword as well. Um, I mean, we do have, if you, if the, the about page that we didn't show shows that we are, you know, we want to be sure that people look at the labels. Um, this, this, the product page displays what's in there um, and it does show those sites, but um, a wild, the wildcard searches or substring searches might show you things that would be like sites that you weren't expecting and give, re return those products. And I, I wouldn't want people to think that a search that they got a search result list and that list of products was guaranteed to be you know, usable on site X when it happened that a substring match worked there. So I can definitely, I, I can definitely understand the, the desire for that. And the, um, the and versus or searching, um, those, kind, those kinds of features are definitely the kinds of things that we're looking for. And I've, I've been thinking about that stuff as we've been developing this version one. Um, we've got, uh, I've got, I have some stuff planned already. Um, I'd like to make it so that um, right now, it searches when you click the search button or the refine button. It searches all the tabs, whatever's in them, and that's and then you can clear them out. I'm going to make it so that you can search only one tab or all tabs. There will be a button for both of those, so you can distinguish that and you know you're getting only the re results on that one tab you're looking at. Um, and then stuff like and and or um, on the lists um, uh, should be relatively simple to implement, probably with the little radio button or something next to those boxes. It lets you choose what you're doing. Um, stuff like that. So yeah, we'll, this is in, um, this will be going through iterative, iterative development and uh, we love that, that feedback. So. And, and I'll just, this is Dave Stone, I'll just add that I, I think this idea of the aggregating of the youth sites or how, how we present the youth sites is, is a, a going to be a, a future conversation we have with EPA about uh, you know, how, to, how to think through this and, and collaborate with them on uh, on that issue because it's a big one and it's one we, we, we certainly recognize can be a limitation of the tool and, and, and the, the feedback the user gets. We've got a question being typed in the chat box. Uh, well, maybe not. Maybe not. Sorry, Dave. 
Dave? Yes. Oh, this is Anna. It's just that we're having trouble uh, uh, using the the chat box, and but there's a question here. Um, so I don't know if uh, if we can ask it over the phone. Please. Sure. Yeah, please, please. do. Go ahead. Yes, thank you for a wonderful presentation. Have been very in instructive. My question is more related to uh, active ingredients, and is there any potential uh, work in the future to get to the co-occurrence of active ingredients, searching for two active ingredients at a time to get to the products that may have two or more? Uh, so yeah, so that I think that would be the implementing the and feature we were just talking about. So you could you could search for um, products that contained captan and carbaryl, for example, not not one or the other. Um, so that's yeah, that's something we'll we'll definitely be working on. Is that what you, is that what you were getting at? Yes, and and what I'm getting at is is really mixtures of pesticides. Is there in the future future work related to a way to search for for that, different families apply different uh, pesticide classes apply in the same site. That's a really interesting idea. This is Casey Buell. Um, the list of active ingredients could be organized into a group by chemical class or by type. We haven't done that work yet, but that's a great suggestion. Something to think about if you were looking for a product that contains an insect growth regulator or something like that. But I should clarify, this pro this tool only lets you search for um, whole products. So it doesn't have any data to advise mixing different products or, um, or any of those kind of ideas, if that's what you're thinking about with mixtures. But if you were thinking about a mixture within one product, yes, that, that feature will be added soon. So you can look for products that contain uh, active ingredient A and active ingredient B, excluding any that don't. Okay. Uh We've, Excellent. Thank you so much. We've got a question in the chat box. Uh, does NPRO just pull up the most recent EPA label? Yes. The answer to that briefly is yes. Um, how does it work with products like supplement with with supplemental labeling like Roundup? Um, Casey can address that. So with supplemental labeling that shows up at the state level, none of that is going to be included in this uh, data set. This is only federal information. But a product like Roundup, you might be referring to, has just dozens and dozens of distributor labels and different versions. Um, the best way to use this tool would be to search by EPA registration number to make sure you're finding the exact product you're looking for. Um, I'm sure if you put Roundup into the search box, you'll find just way too many results and it would be tough to narrow down without that EPA registration number. Um, we have another, well, we have a large set of questions here um, in the chat box. Three questions. One. Uh, are there any future plans to include state data so users will be able to determine whether a product register in their state? Um, if not, can a disclaimer be placed on your site instructing potential sellers for, or users to check with their state prior to sale or use? Uh, since the final product label may not include all the uses or claims that appear on the EPA master label, could a disclaimer be placed on your site advising the NPRO user to check the final label? Um, we can we should be able to spell more of that stuff out. That's that's a, a good idea. Um, and we don't in the, the future plans, we don't if if there were a good single source for us to be able to get all the state labels, we would be we would love to get them in here, but so far we haven't found a good way for us to get the state labels. Um, so this will, as far as we can that we can see, this will continue to be a federal resource. Um, there's another question. Uh, from Region 9, would you consider adding ability to search on environmental hazard statements, bee hazard, groundwater hazard, et cetera? Um, we don't have any of those in the data set that, uh, that we get. So if, if we had access to that data, we would ha be happy to search on it. But, but as it is right now, the, we are, the PPIS data does not, concern, uh, does not contain any of that information. I think that's an interesting idea. But right now, that data, as you probably know, is buried within the labels. So there's no way to get it out without reading every label. Um, but I think that's good feedback, especially for EPA to hear, for those of you on the phone, if um, that field or fields could be added to the PPIS and um, coded. Because I know every product has to be evaluated for bee toxicity and, and uh, precautionary statements chosen. So it would be great to have that coded so it could become a search feature. Yeah.
Any other questions on the phone? We have we don't have any any uh, left in the chat box. I, I do have a question. Would would this site be of any value if I was trying to find a tolerance or an LC fifty? Um, no, the uh, that should be in the um, available on ChemSearch with the um, if you link to the chemicals directly um, from those products. So the links to ChemSearch are there in the product display, but we don't have the, it's not information on the product label. That's right. That's right. So if you click on an active ingredient in the results, that'll take you to ChemSearch. From there, you would click on Science Reviews and look for the EFED, the Ecological Fate and Effects Division Risk Assessment, and that would include LC50s for aquatic organisms. If you are looking for um, tolerances, we actually have a different search tool on our website that will allow you to do that, and you just pop in the active ingredient, it takes you right to the CFR where you see a, a, the most recent list. So um, call our center and we'll walk you through how to find that. I don't remember the URL off the top of my head. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for your question. Okay, if there's not further questions, uh, again, we appreciate your patience with a little bit of a rough start with the URL linking to the presentation. Uh, we will certainly be posting this again, uh, or, or, or posting the video recording, and perhaps actually uh, doing this again uh, to make sure that uh, those that couldn't chime in that want to hear it live and ask the question live have the opportunity to do it. And again, I'll just wrap up with, um, you know, we really hope to hear from you, the, the, the potential users and stakeholders of this tool, on the ways that we can improve it. We certainly heard things today that we're going to act on and consider uh, that will help make this tool better. Uh, but, but at any time, feel free to give us a call, email us, and uh, love to hear the feedback. So with that, I, I wish everyone a, a happy Thursday. And again, thank you for attending this webinar. Thank you very much.